Uh, let's speak now to Sue Sim, who was Chief Constable of Northumbria Police in 2010 during that infamous manhunt for killer Raoul Moat, uh, who was on the run for nearly a week. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Sue. Uh, I'm tempted to call you a TV star. You, uh, during those uh, dark days back in 2010, you were on the telly more than Bradley Walsh. But uh, good to have you on board. Tell us uh, about the difficulties... Uh, that the police will now be experiencing in finding this guy. I mean, he won't be hard to pick out in a crowd because it looks to me as if through that chemical that he threw at uh, the poor mum and the two kids, he's, he's literally uh, ruined one of his eyes. It looks like he's lost his, his, his right eye. Uh, so he won't be hard to find, but uh, nevertheless, he's still on the run. What difficulties will the police be experiencing in trying to find him? Good afternoon. Well, unfortunately, what happens in cases like this sometimes is that um, it's very easy to get lost in a big city, to, to be honest. Uh, people sort of tend to keep their heads down. They uh, don't look around them. And also, the thing is, people tend to think, oh, well, if I've seen him, somebody else has seen him, and therefore they, they don't call the police. What I would urge is anybody who sees this man, phone 999 immediately. Do not approach him. He's dangerous. But call 999. You're not wasting anybody's time. This is what anybody needs to do. If you see him, call 999. And the will be coordinating with Northumbria, which is where he was from, with British Transport Police, because if he's been heading over towards King's Cross, the assumption would probably be that he was going to get on. And if he gets on a train, then he could be heading back up to uh, Newcastle. So that's what we're going to be doing. So where would you think the best place to start looking for him is? Because one assumes if he's gotten on a train at King's Cross, there'll be a lot of eyewitnesses who can lay testament to that, as well as significant CCTV. Uh, as that it's, uh, you know, coming up to almost a 24-hour period, no, more than a 24-hour period, is it possible that someone could be harbouring him? It is possible that somebody could be harbouring him. And if that's the case, then I would urge that person or anybody who knows his whereabouts, police immediately. And uh, Sue, what were the police, uh, three police's, police forces involved in this massive manhunt? What will they be doing now? I mean, uh, presumably uh, pouring through lots of CCTV, uh, checking out CCTV on the trains going north, maybe patrolling the area where he's from in Newcastle. I'm kind of answering my own question, but I'm sure you've got more details to provide us with. What will the cops be doing right now? Well, what they'll be doing is they will be using every intelligence source, both in the Metropolitan on British Transport Police and in Northumbria, to see if they can track down, <coughs> excuse me, the whereabouts of any friends, any associates, last known addresses, um, where he used to frequent. They will be going to everybody, to everywhere. They will be setting up opportunities to potentially see if he is going to go into any of those properties. And that's what they will be doing at this stage. Sue, so, thank you ever so much. Thank you, and, Sue. Uh, thank you for giving us your expert insight in how police manhunts could take place. I mean, Trevor, the, to, to me, the big question here is the failing of the government, the failing of the Home Office. How someone can enter the country illegally in 2016, be denied asylum twice, but still be here, then go on to commit sexual offences, and then after that be granted asylum? It beggars belief. It would beg a belief if it didn't happen or seem to happen every other day because they uh, turn a blind eye to well-known facts about various people who subsequently go on to commit appalling atrocities. Um, one of the things, a very sensitive question to ask, but um, this guy was from Afghanistan originally. But they don't exactly have the proudest record of the way tr they treat women. And this is so part of the honour system in uh, the faith that I presume that he had. Um, was this an, uh, an honour attack because of some 
domestic abuse or domestic row that flared into something where he demanded revenge. And if it was, I think about your point about um, people helping him. Would, would people of a similar view give him uh, mm. shelter? Uh, all of these are questions which are coming straight out of the top of my head, mm. but I think they're ones which a lot of people will put to... But of course, uh, Trevor, you, you do him wrong. He's converted to Christianity, of which course. of course was a total coincidence during his uh, application to gain asylum here. Just like the London Bridge. Exactly right. Okay. I mean, you know, mm. again, let's think about it. He arrives in 2016 on the back of a lorry, illegally. Applies for asylum, is turned down, quite rightly. Applies again, is turned down. Then takes a little time out to go and commit a couple of sex offences, uh, flashing at some woman and sexually assaulting them. Uh, then applies again, but in the meantime, hooks up with some priest or vicar in uh, Newcastle who says, yeah, this guy's uh, converted to Christianity and I'll vouch for him. Third time lucky, he is allowed to stay. He is granted asylum despite being a convicted sex attacker. Uh, I mean, to say this is not good enough uh, is the understatement of the century. I mean, this is an absolute scandal. And do you remember back in 2020, I think it was, uh, that Liverpool Women's Hospital that was bombed by a guy uh, who actually had been denied asylum twice, I think it was, uh, but then said, well, please, can I try to apply again? And I said, well, we're not sure about that, uh, but you might like to think about uh, converting to Christianity, which he duly did. Then he went to Liverpool Women's Hospital and blew it up and killed himself in the process. So this is not the first time this kind of thing has happened. 75% of these people who arrive here illegally are allowed to stay. That is by far and away the highest percentage of, of migrants that are allowed to stay in, the, in a country in the entire world. It's absurd, our system. Uh, it is absurd. It's been absurd for a very long time. And I mean, this is something which has been going on for the last 25 years. Um, the, uh, the, the, these are the acts clearly of a devout Christian, practicing Christian. <laughs> and were they not picked up even by the stupid cleric who uh, decided that he was a converted Christian, that this man was lying through his teeth and that he was doing anything possible in order to mm. qualify as a, a, an asylum seeker. Mm. And then to abuse the hospitality that he's demanded by going out and behaving in the way he has, not just on this appalling incident, but in the way that he carried out the sex attack for which he should have been denied citizenship. Mm. Yeah, is it not time that uh, we got rid of the political correctness and had a national conversation about quite what sort of medieval and barbaric cultures we are importing into this country? This is an extremely serious incident, but on the same day yesterday, we heard about Mike Freer, the MP in Golders Green, standing down because people have set fire to his constituency offices, said he deserved to burn because he's a homosexual, threatened his life uh, because he supports Israel. We've got a school teacher still in hiding in Yorkshire. I mean, the list goes on on and on and on and yet even today nobody is daring to speak what has gone on here which is over the past 10 20 years we have imported especially men from countries who do not share our values and now that's beginning to really show that's beginning to manifest in a serious way and i think that the british people have been clocking this for a very long yep. time too they're not allowed to speak about it because they're immediately branded and have been for as i say 25 years immediately denounced as Islamophobes, racists, fascists, and that's the gagging mechanism which uh, protects those who are committing these offences and gags the people who can see and would like something done about it. And I think that the government, uh, this particular government, the Conservative government, is, is responsible for yeah, just yeah, ignoring yeah. and encouraging mm. the enormous explosion of uh, migrants, both legal and illegal, despite yeah. all their alleged eff efforts to stem the boat people. Yeah, and the lawyers, it's out of control. the lawyers, the politicians and that cleric and the cl men and women of the cloth who are responsible for this <coughs> guy being able to stay in this country. You think about that mum who's lost her face right. and you think about her kids who've also lost their faces. Right. Uh, that's your fault. That's on you. It's yeah. unbelievable. All these people have made our country far more dangerous for people like women, people like homosexuals. Well done.